Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Today we're going to begin building the M36 Jackson, the Battle of the Bulge edition. This is a brand new model from Academy. It is due out sometime in mid-February in the United States, and which is about a week from now as I start to film this video. I would like to thank Academy for getting us out this uh, early copy of it so I can show you guys the build of it. Uh, so let's get started on it. <laughs> Okay, as we uh, start the construction, the first off you'll notice is that it is a bathtub style hull, and it's actually the same hull that the uh, M10, the GMC version that we built a while back was, so it's exactly the same that. So the sides and sponsons are all molded in the shape. Uh, the first thing that you want to complete are the, the suspension arms, or the bogies down here. And this is just a little builder's tip. Uh, now these are fully workable and I wanted to show you them working before I glued it in place. If you decide to have the working suspension like that, a lot of times when you put the, the rubber band tracks these are, it'll have a tendency because they're a little bit tight to pull up the front or back wheel depending on what part of the vehicle it's on. So it won't lay down perfectly uh, flat a lot of times. So And I want it to lay as flat as possible. So I'll will go back and glue this right into place and it just requires putting a touch of uh, liquid cement on this spring inside here and that'll lock it keeping it flat of course but we'll do that once we attach it to the hull and that way we'll get a nice flat surface on it now keep in mind too as you start to build the lower bogies here or the bogies i should say uh there's a little, these little sets of springs that go inside here, which if you follow the instructions exactly, they're a little bit difficult to get into shape, and that's just because of the way it's um, designed. If you go ahead and just build it out of its order by putting the, uh, the bottom piece, then this piece, gluing this into shape, and then attaching the wheels, you'll just have a much easier time putting the springs in. And since I'm already right here, I'm going to put the glue on that little area of the spring that'll keep the... Uh, keep the suspension arm straight on it as well. And then all it's a matter of doing is just putting the wheels on. Lay this flat. And then coming back and attaching the wheel up here. And then lastly, a little more glue on that. And then putting the outer piece on here. And you'll ju it'll just make them go together much, much quicker. Uh, I did start, like I said, I was going to put them and let them dry the other way, but you can also let them dry if you put the, soup, the glue on there, just making sure that they're perfectly flat. So I'm going to assemble all of the, uh, the lower bogies now, and we'll put those all together, and we'll start attaching them to the hull. Okay, the lower hull assembly is pretty easy and straightforward. You've got these extra tabs on the front that you need to attach. Actually put a little extra glue to make sure they stay on nice and tight. And then on the back you've got this tab which holds the uh, return roller, or the, excuse me, the idler wheel back there. So we'll glue those into place. And then once those parts have set up, you can go ahead and start attaching the bogies down here. Just remembering obviously that the, uh, the spring goes forward on this. Now this is one of the, the first ones I built, so I haven't glued the spring down in there. So we can go ahead and put the the glue in there now since we'll have it all set up like this once we get them all on. I've gone ahead and I've let the suspension dry now for about an hour so it's a nice uh, nice flat off all, all the wheels are touching the ground. I started doing the drive sprocket uh, and attached this piece here but we're not going to glue this piece yet in. We can hold it in the shape here 
actually got it on backwards there. We could put this on into place and and leave it there, but I would advise not to glue it down yet. And because of the rubber band tracks, you want to make sure that you get this just right so it lines up with the teeth on the uh, the tracks as well. And then Okay, I've kind of jumped ahead a little bit here because this was pretty straightforward assembling the the interior. So the interior will just drop in in these sub assemblies. Pops right into there. Then you have the rear firewall. And that'll just drop itself right into place as well. Stopping the whole top there. And then you have just the transmission cover that'll glue right into place as well, as well as the uh, the front bolts that hold on the uh, transmission cover. Got to do a little bit more sanding into place on some of that stuff. That little burr on each one of those areas is really difficult to get at the way it's been molded in there. But with uh, some of these real fine sanding sticks, those help out quite a bit when you want to get into those tight little areas. So now that I've shown you all that, I'm going to go ahead and glue all those pieces down and we'll move on to the next section. Okay, uh, I've assembled the uh, the top part of the hull and we've put it into place here and you might notice that part of it is now painted black and that was because once I got it on the fit wasn't terrible but I did, was left with a little bit of a seam in the front and a little bit of a seam going around the uh, the engine cover plate that was bothering me so I took my Vallejo uh, putty and I had filled it all in did a little sanding on it and painted it black now because it's much easier to see if you still have a flaw in something and as I can see here there is still just a touch of a a little bit of a crack here that I'll, I'll go ahead and fill again, do a little more sanding on it, take care of that. Um, after we do that, we can go ahead and start putting on the light guards, the lights, all those other little pieces, start attaching the hatches, things like that. I won't show that on camera because it's pretty basic stuff. So we'll go ahead and finish all that portion up, and then we're going to go to work on the turret, which uh, not too, too many pieces, but looks like it's fitting together pretty tight on this piece. So in fact, it clicks together in a lot of areas. So we'll finish up that over there and then start working on the turret. Okay, I've kind of jumped a little bit ahead in the uh, construction process of this vehicle. So I thought I would take a moment here and kind of go over with you guys what I've done so far. Uh, I went ahead and put all the hatches on, the light guards, the little lifting hooks, some of the brackets on the side here, as well as like the things like the, uh, the gas caps, all the brackets and stuff on the back, light guards, things like that. Now, this kit ha is the Battle of the Bulge uh, M36, but they also give the ability to build the B2, which is what I've chosen to do right here. And what this has is it has a muzzle brake on the 90 millimeter gun, plus this kind of cool cover that would protect the crew a little bit. It is not completely bolted on. It, there is an opening all the way around that they can see out, but it will give them a little protection from the elements, things like that. 
Now, as you can see, I've also painted the entire vehicle black because there are a few little flaws that I need to clean up and the black is a great way of showing off uh, what you need to do some repair on. So what I thought I would do now is take a few minutes, start cleaning up some of those areas. We'll come back, we'll start putting a paint job on it, doing the tools, things like that. Okay, this is a uh, quick builder's note. Uh, after I got done filming and showing you guys the, the how the parts all look, I decided I was going to dry fit the tracks into place. Now you may have noticed I had glued the uh, return uh, the idler wheel, excuse me, on the back of the vehicle. And when you do that, because of the overhang of this armor plate, it's impossible to get these tracks on. So I ended up having to hit to break these off. And then because of that, I had to drill this out and put a new peg in there that we're going to put this on. But I wanted to tell you first, I thought I was going to be able to get it on just leaving the uh, drive sprocket off, but that is not the case. So definitely put the, uh, the tracks on before you put the upper hull together. Okay, I've got all of the uh, suspension back together and the tracks on, and they're fitting nice and tight. Uh, since then, I've gone over the entire vehicle with the white to do the black and white technique because we're going to spray the entire model now with XF62 Tamiya's Olive Drab. And we'll go ahead and do that right now. I've began to uh, put the, uh, the decals on and we're using Tamiya's Mark Fit Strong. And we've applied a little coat underneath the decal and then a little bit on top of the decal as per the instructions. And we're gonna let that kind of set up for a few moments, probably for about maybe five minutes. And just before it's completely dry, we're gonna take a cotton swab and just force any of the air bubbles out of it and it'll get a really, really strong adhesion to it. Now, another thing a few people have asked me about when I'm doing decals as well, and I'm putting decals over a flat surface. Uh, the dull coat is not completely 100% flat, first of all, and second of all, I'll usually go in that area and kind of polish it up with a paper towel to help it stick, but I found that, especially for such small amount of decals, uh, it's easy just to put it on right over the dull coat, and then when you s put another coat or two of dull coat over it, it's going to completely seal it, seal it in and get rid of any silvering that you might see on it. So we're going to let this dry come back, and I'll show you what it looks like after it's dried and set up wanted to show you guys a, the beginnings of a weathering technique that I've kind of discovered on accident. Um, to begin with, this is starting to dry, but you can kind of see the effect we're getting with it with the, uh, the dirty, uh, dirty, muddy, and kind of some areas dry. And that all comes from just using a little bit of Tamiya's panel line accent color. And you can kind of just blot it on kind of thick, not even, uh, not even worrying about where it's going or anything like that. And then just using a little bit of our old standby, the Vallejo Pigments, the Light Sienna, and a big flat dry brush, just taking a fair amount of it and just kind of start blotting it into the, uh, the wet areas. And we will do the same, uh, same effect on the tracks. And what we'll do is, looks a little unusual now because it hasn't fully dried yet, but uh, what we'll do is come back in about five minutes after this dried and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, uh, it's, had a, it's had a decent amount of time to dry now and then I put a, a second layer of it, a little bit thicker of the dirt so it kind of looks like some really dried up high spots. We also went around and did all of the uh, lower portion underneath the tracks and actually some of this is still drying so it's not completely done yet also attached all the tools and you can see when we use the uh, panel line accent on the wood handles how it makes them look kind of a, like of a dirty look now there again it's I put a little bit more on this area too so it's still drying that's why it's got a little bit of a shine I'll show you a little bit more after all of this has had a little bit longer chance to dry and even in through here, you can see there's some areas that are still wet. This is the part that I mainly want to show you because this is the dry part and how it ends up turning out after it's all set up. Well, here is our uh, completed model. Uh, I've kind of skipped ahead a little bit on some of the technique because they were very, very similar to what we had just done with the uh, M40 tank. But I'll kind of go over with you real quick uh, what we did. Now, you saw that the, the mud effect that we had on here, which... 
if you guys get a chance, Google uh, search the M36 Jackson and look, especially the ones in Korea with the color photos. There is a lot of them that look just like this that have all of that uh, that dirt and mud and you know dirt effect all over the front. Uh, you may have also noticed too that I removed the the star off the side that you may have seen earlier and moved it up to the top. Uh, I just found that most of them had the star on the uh, the turret when it came to uh, to later because this is more of like a Korean War type one. I also went over the vehicle with a little bit of our streaking grime and uh, just a touch of the light rust like we've done before to just do a little bit more of staining effect on it, kind of darken up the turret and put some like water stains up on top of the turret as well. So overall, uh, I had a little bit, like I said earlier, a little bit of a fit problem with the with the body, and that was mainly because it was the older part of the kit. The turret went together absolutely fine because that was all brand new tooling, and it was nothing that was in, impossible to work on. It, it just took a little bit extra time of uh, getting it all fit together. Uh, retail wise, this kit only retails for about forty dollars in the U.S., so it's uh, it's an inexpensive kit. It actually builds up quite nice once it is done. So uh, this is going to be a little bit shorter video than normal. I'm kind of getting ready for our big uh, model show at the end of the uh, the week, which uh, if any of you guys live in the Phoenix area uh, or near the Phoenix area, please stop on by. It's at for the uh, Canyon State Model Con 2. That'll be happening Saturday, February 25th. And I want to thank you, for, as always, for watching. And uh, please stay tuned because we have more videos coming.